Okay, so check this out. Um, I have a problem. I mean, I got a lot of problems, but what's happening right now is whenever I chop up these skateboards, usually to use a middle section of the skateboards because it's the most straight and the most meat out of the whole skateboards. For nose and tails, I like to sand it, use it as a bowl blank, but these, these are really hard to work with. You're not gonna get that much material out of them. Truck holes, there's two different concaves. It's about three and a quarter inch uh, in height and it's about, I think, eight inches in width. I get a lot of these because every time I chop up one skateboard, I get two of these pieces. And the main problem is I don't have any room up there. I can't chop up new skateboards or I don't have anywhere for these pieces to go. So I have to start making things out of these so for this video I'm gonna make something with these first I started sanding these pieces down to bare wood and in total I sanded about 90 of these pieces after sanding I epoxy them together and I glue them up in three different blocks and I use total Bow's two to one high performance epoxy to make sure that it fills in the gaps and the concaves and the truck holes once these blocks were cured I resaw them on my bandsaw and I resaw them into about quarter inch veneers and I got about 20 veneers per block. And in total, I got 60 of these veneers out of 90 of these pieces. And then I could sand it down to the same thickness on the drum sander. Now, I glued up these blocks in a way that I have three different colors. One's kind of pinkish, one's bluish, and one's almost blank, and just one color in each skateboard. So I cross-cut them on the table saw into three different sections. And that's how I got these veneers, and I have about 180 of these veneers out of 90 of these pieces, so it's a pretty good trade-off I would say. So now let's do something on the table saw which I think is the most important part of this step. Woo! Okay so you know how in my previous uh, pencil holder making video I had my friend Eric from Cutworks help me make these acrylic bases for the pencil holders. Now he always goes above and beyond and pretty much gave me a bunch of different samples and you know showing me what kind of laser cuts that he could do and this kind of inspired me in a way that you could kind of towel it all together and make a pattern out of it that's exactly what i want to do so i need to cut i need to cut a bunch of these into a hexagon and that's what we're gonna do on the table saw now in relation to whatever happened in that video, we're gonna use the same base. And I'm pretty sure in the last video I said save the other side so you can use it. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Whoo! Such a smart little boy. Okay, so while I was trying to figure it out, my camera battery just died. So I'll just explain what I just did here. So what I'm going to do is first make this first cut. That's the first cut. Okay, and then this fresh cut edge gets rested on the second stop here, and then I make the cut. And then I'm gonna keep rotating this cut against the fresh cut edge, and then that's how you get a hexagon. Okay, so here it is, a hexagon. Now, I tried it in a couple different ways. So I have one here like this. This is what I'm thinking. And I had another pattern here, another one like this. I'm trying to have it so the pointier ends, the grain goes this way, whereas this one, it goes this way. See the difference? So I like this a little bit better than this. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's cut what? 180 of those veneers. Okay, so I just finished cutting all the planks into these hexagons and I should have about 180 of these hexagons here. And there's three different colors and three different variations. So each of these hexagons in the same pattern, it's about 20 of them. There's a distinct difference between the three different colors, whatever. Anyways, since these are hexagons, there's several different ways to mix and match, lay out a certain pattern. Now, off camera, I kind of practice around and mess around with it and got a pattern that I really like. So underneath, this is a sheet of plywood that I just cut up to match the size and I'm going to go for a round tabletop. And so, yeah. For now, I'm just gonna glue these hexagons onto the plywood using CA glue. And after that, we could just epoxy everything and everything's gonna be nice and secure and have a nice little top coat. So let's do that. Okay, so I have it temporarily glued up with CA glue and I'm just gonna do a quick sanding job and then I'm gonna seal it with epoxy. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit of gaps here and there. So epoxy is gonna definitely fill all those up. So let's do that. That looks nice. So I just cover up the whole tabletop with epoxy and I'm not trying to get a thick layer. I'm just literally only trying to wet the bare wood. And I'm gonna come back tomorrow once it cures, I'm gonna sand it all down and then I'm gonna do a final pour. So we're good right here. Woo! Okay, so it's the next day and the epoxy has cured and pretty much I'm ready to start working on it now. What I decided is I'm actually going to have a round tabletop. I don't know if I said that earlier, but if I cut it into a circle, you're gonna see the plywood edge from the sides and that's no bueno. So I wanna make a nice wooden frame around the tabletop and I thought of multiple different ways. I was even thinking about getting edge banding, which is very thin and just wrap that around and you're not even gonna see the plywood edges. But I thought, let's try something new for this one. So I got some hard maple here and I'm actually gonna cut out the frame or the pieces of it on the CNC machine. So while it's cutting it out on the CNC machine, I'm gonna sand this down and we're working double time here. So let's do that. Okay, so I have the pieces for the outer frame cut on the CNC machine and I had to do a little bit of cleanup with the chisel and sand, you know, any rough edges. 
But other than that, it came out really nice. Now, for the tabletop itself, I sanded it up to 120. And for now, what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut a circle using the circle cutting router jig from Rockler. And after cutting that out, I could start assembling the outer frames. And I kind of made it in a way that it connects through a dovetail for each ends, but it's not really fitting that well. And so we'll figure out some solution for that later, but let's just cut the circle for now. Okay, so I just finished setting up this router jig and let me just quickly explain what's happening. So this is just a router jig from Rockler. And what I did is Traditionally, what you would have to do is you would have to drill a hole in the center and then there's a little pin on this side and then you put that pin in there and then you could swivel around and cut it out. But I don't want to drill any holes on this tabletop. So what I did is I just attached it with CA glue and blue tape, a half inch plywood and same thing on the router base as well. So now I could just put the pin inside and I didn't have to drill any holes. So. I just have to measure it out and start cutting the circles. So um, I'm running into a little bit of an issue right now. So the frame itself is about a quarter inch bigger than the tabletop itself. So it's not fitting and it's kind of loose. And so there's really no good way to reference this off the fence to get a nice clean cut uh, because everything's round. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna temporarily clamp the outer frame together and then use the track saw to cut a little bit off and keep doing that until it fits pretty much. I, I mean, that's the only best way that I could think of to salvage these. And the dovetails itself, it's not really working that well either because the dovetail is pretty much a straight stick. I should have angled it a little more, but I didn't. So I gotta figure something out for that too. But for now, I wanna make sure I could fit this perfectly against the tabletop so there's no play here. But try and see if I could do that. Did I get it? I think we're good. Ah, it's too short. So uh, when I tried to flip it right now, uh, I broke off 
some of the pieces and I had to do a quick repair job. And there are some corners that are chipped and I'm hoping just glue and sawdust will fill that up. So for now, what I'm thinking, I was gonna glue this up first and then glue it onto the tabletop. But just as you saw it, I don't wanna do that because I think it's gonna be too fragile. So I'm gonna just glue it straight onto the tabletop right now. Okay. Now, I think this is gonna hold up and I'm just gluing it onto the table and then I'm gonna sand the top one more because I have a little few scratch marks and I'm gonna clean this up, sand it, and then do an epoxy pour up to the line. I think it's about an eighth of an inch and that'll be a glassy top. Sand everything nice and flush, flip it over, sand it, and then buff it out and we should be good. I'm relying heavily on the epoxy and glue. And uh, yeah, there's some spots that are tiny gap, you know, but we'll see when I sand it after I do the epoxy pour. And we'll know everything once I sand everything down. I have to sand. God, I hate sanding. Oh, it's a nice fit. That little bit of gap. So I'm gonna have to fill it up with glue and that's gonna prevent all this epoxy dripping all over. And I've been doing this for a while and I know it works. So I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so I'm running into another issue where the frame on the inside circle, it doesn't perfectly line up. So I'm gonna use the router jig again to trim the inside ring of the maple frame and uh, see if I could get a perfect circle on the inside. And then after that, I'm gonna use epoxy to fill it up about an eighth of an inch on the tabletop itself. And I was thinking about doing it in one pour, but I think there might be holes and gaps underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a, a seal coat and then come back and fill the rest of it in tomorrow. So let's do that. Okay, so the tabletop is now sanded, the frames are sanded, the bottom side, I ended up sanding it as well. And so now I'm ready for the first epoxy pour. And this is to seal everything and they usually call it the seal coat. And so you're just putting a thin layer of epoxy so none of it gets dropped. And then the next pour, everything's gonna be sealed. So seal coat, let's do that. And everything is now leveled. And I mean, it doesn't even matter because I'm just sealing it. So let's use um, epoxy. Okay, so it's the next day and the seal coat is now cured. And honestly, it seems like I could have just done this in one pour but this is a lot safer. So, you know, none of the epoxy just starts leaking out. So now I just have to finish up the pour and fill it up up until where it hits the border. So none of it just starts flowing out. So let's do that. By the way, I haven't slept in 
24 hours because I keep drinking coffee at like 9 p.m. and thinking I'm gonna be fine. I'm not. Okay, so the top layer is curing and it's harder now and I'm gonna let it cure for another, at least overnight. So what I'm actually going to do is flip it over. Okay. And work on the back. Now, there's a little bit of gap in between the frame and the tabletop itself and I don't wanna leave it like that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually gonna use the circle cutting jig again and cut a groove where the line is and pour epoxy in it, you know? And same thing with the dovetail uh, cutout that I did. The dovetail pieces are not fitting correctly and so I'm thinking I'm just gonna pour black epoxy and make it seem like it's doing something but it's not really doing something. I don't know, maybe it's doing something. So let's do that. Looks like the epoxy cured. So, all we have to do now oh, is sand it. God, I hate sanding though. Oh my God. Let's start sanding. So the top of the table, I just wet sanded it up to 4,000. Looks good, I wanna let it dry. And so I wanna finish the bottom first. And there's some spots a little darker than the middle cause I sanded it a little too deep and it's like right before it reveals the second layer of the plywood. So in an attempt to fix that, I'm gonna try to use charcoal Rubio Monaco finish and hopefully it's dark enough to cover that but I'm gonna do it up to the dark ring and then finish the rest with regular pure Monaco and all we have to do is wipe it on and wipe it off so let's see how that goes Okay, so the finish right now is dry enough for me to handle it, but it's not fully cured yet. So what I'm actually going to do, flip it over, install these metal legs that I got from Amazon. This is called Y-shaped legs, and they sold it in three, so it was like perfect because I only needed three uh, legs for this. So let's go ahead and do that. Thank you. 
Okay, so here it is. A round dining table made out of the worst pieces of recycled skateboards to work with. And just to remind you, the whole project started because I needed to use these pieces of skateboards. And like I said, these are the worst to work with because there's two different concaves, truck holes, uh, a lot of times the concaves don't match, and you just don't get that much material out of them. And I really had no idea how it was going to come out, and after seeing it completed, I'm very happy with how it came out. And if you guys are interested, make sure to check out my website, which is wobi.design, and I'll have it available. And it's already packed and ready to be shipped, so that's why I'm not showing you right now. Got it? Now, I made a lot of mistakes in this project, and if I were to do it again, I would do it completely different. And I just wanna go over a few mistakes so that if you guys are watching and trying to do this, maybe you could avoid the mistakes and not do what I just did. And honestly, I'm only doing this for my future reference, so future Ben, if you're watching this, don't make the same mistake again. First, I wouldn't use these pieces and just use the middle section of the skateboards. And the reason being is I think it would look way better if everything was perfectly aligned, all the lines are perfectly straight, then it would look way cooler. And with these, you know, concaves, it still looks pretty cool, but just imagine everything aligning perfectly straight. I mean, it might be my OCD, but it would look nice. Secondly, I would make the outer frame by creating a large, like a segmented ring, and then use the router jig to cut out a perfect circle. And this way, it would fit perfectly, and I could adjust the size of it just by using the router jig instead of relying heavily on measurements and on the CNC machine when I really didn't have to. And most of the mistakes that happen with this project is because I used the CNC machine. So for those of you who's wanting a CNC machine, sometimes it just doesn't work out. It might be just better to use the tools that you already have. And honestly, this is just my fault for designing a shitty design real quick and being lazy, so don't be lazy. Okay, so that's it for this video. I know a lot of you are asking about the van and just to let you know, the framing is done inside the van and I'm working on two different videos to edit and it's taking some time, so just relax. It's coming. And special shout out to my Patreon members for always supporting this channel and pretty much helping me grow. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and comment down below what you guys think about that dining table that I just made out of the worst pieces of recycled skateboards. Thanks again, and until next time.